hallelujah we come to give god praise this morning he is such a wonderful god we welcome you whether you are in this building today or you're joining us virtually but we've come to give god glory help us celebrate the king this morning as we sing and worship the lord hallelujah hallelujah Our God is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. He is worthy to be praised this morning. And that's what we've come to do. Hallelujah. Feel free if you want to stand with us and clap your hands. We've come to give him praise. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate our King. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. Come on, Zion, we praise our King. Let's celebrate our King. Celebrate our He's the ruler King. of everything. Ruler of every Let's King. lift his name on high. Let's lift him up. Come on, Zion, we praise our King. Hallelujah. We bless his name. Oh, he's worthy of all praise. Excellent King, He's worthy of all of our praise. Righteous and glorious, oh, let's lift Him up. Come on, Zion, we praise our King. Oh, let's celebrate our King. Celebrate our He's the ruler King. of everything. Let's lift King. His name on high. Him up. Come on, Zion, we praise our King. Oh, Let's say it again. He's righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He's a great God. Righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He's a great God. Say he's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. We believe that he's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. Anybody know he's great? He's a great God. And he's greatly to be praised. He's a great God. From the rising of the sun. He's a great God. To the setting of the same. He's a great God. Oh, he's a great God. He's a great God. The Lord is so great. He's a great God. He's 
Hallelujah. He is a great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's a great God. So as we look to the Lord on this morning, if we could bow our heads, close our hearts, close our eyes, and put our heart in a posture of prayer this morning. Hallelujah. He's a great God. Father God, we come to you on this Resurrection Sunday morning, basking in the joy and in your glory, Father God. Thank you for keeping us through the night and waking us up this morning, Father God. We invite your Holy Spirit in this place, Father God. We love you. We adore you. And we just thank you for the opportunity to give your name praise one more time, Father God. And as we're gathering in this sanctuary, we ask that you would bless each and every person that is in this sanctuary and every family that's represented therein, Father God. We ask you to for traveling mercies for those who are yet on their way, Father God. And we ask you to fill our hearts with joy this morning, Father God, to fill our hearts with nothing but you, Father God. Allow us to be renewed, Father God, on this morning as we celebrate the fact that you got up, Father God. And so we thank you for this Resurrection Sunday morning. We thank you for this opportunity to gather in person, Father God, and we love you. We invite your Holy Spirit, and we just want to give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. And it is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just wonder if we can continue to bless God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the Lord of Lords. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, he is Lord. risen from the dead and he is Lord every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Can we sing that all over the building? He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the morning, Bethel. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Just a reminder, he is Lord and he reigns supreme over our lives. Hallelujah. And we can never repay him for the things that he's done and for what he did on Calvary. He did not have to do it. He didn't have to do it for us. Hallelujah. But we bless his name and we thank him for his sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard an old, old story about a Savior that came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary. He did it all just for me. They nailed him in his hand. Oh God, they nailed him in his feet. They nailed him to a cross to die. And all the while he was thinking of me. Cause in those nails was every mistake I made. The thorns were formed from my lies the lashes he took they were meant for me hallelujah but you told God you would take them instead you agreed to do it you agreed to die you agreed to give your life to save mine Oh, what a sacrifice you made for me. Knowing all that you would have to go through, you agreed. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, you agreed. Can you help me say it? I heard an old story. I heard an old story. Story about a savior that came from about glory. A savior that came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary. How he gave his life at Calvary. He did it all just for me. He did it Hallelujah. all just for me. They nailed him in his hand. They nailed him in his hand. And they nailed him in his feet. They nailed him oh. in his feet. They nailed him to a cross to die. They nailed him to a cross to die. And all the, and while, all the while, he was thinking of he me. He was thinking of me. Because in those nails, because in those nails, was every mistake I made. Was every mistake I made. The thorns were formed. The thorns were formed. From my life, from my life, all the lashes you took, they were meant for me. But you told God you would take them instead. Oh, you agreed to do it. You agreed to do it. You agreed to die. You agreed to, die. You agreed to give your you life. Agreed to give just your to life. save yours and mine. Hallelujah. To save mine. Oh, what a sacrifice, oh, what a sacrifice you, made, you for me. made for me, knowing all that you would have to go through. You agreed to do you it. Agreed to do it. You agreed to die. You agreed to die. You agreed to you give agreed your, to life your life to save mine. To save mine. Oh, what a sacrifice. Oh, Give you agreed to give up. 
I can never repay you. I could never repay you. But I'm sure gonna pray. But I'm sure gonna praise you. us hallelujah knowing that he would be beaten bruised just for our iniquities i feel like there should be some sort of praise in this place today because we are all unworthy hallelujah we are all unworthy but god saw fit to send his only begotten son just for us so we can have everlasting life hallelujah so can we give god a praise in this place bethel i know it's not our normal but can we give god a praise this morning hallelujah God, we love you. Hallelujah. Oh, say we love you. We love say you. We love you. We love God, you. God, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love and you. we praise you. We praise you. God, we praise you. 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 We all worthy. on this morning that God would agree. Can you put your hands together and give God praise? This is the day the Lord has made and we have come to rejoice and be glad in it. Can you rest to your feet and just give God a resurrection praise? He did not have to agree to go to Calvary, but I'm so glad he did. Because he did, I can say that I'm saved by his power divine. I'm saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved because God agreed. God agreed. Can you just greet your neighbor on this morning and say, it is good to see you on this Resurrection Sunday. It is good to see you in God's house. To those who are joining us online, we greet you in the name of Jesus, our risen Savior. They crucified him on Friday. He laid in the grave all day on Saturday, but early, <laughs> early Sunday morning, he rose from the dead with power in his hands. And it is good to be on this side of the cross. It is good to be on this side of the tomb. It is good to be on this side of life. 
we are grateful. Hallelujah. 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 Now, in the kind of church that I grew up in, we used to have Easter Sunday speeches, uh, Easter Sunday pageantry, and I see that there are some young folks in their Sunday best. If you are under the age of 12, can you just come right on up here and line up so that we can see our young people? If you under the age of 12, they got on their suits, their dresses, their stockings, their bombardale. Come on and let's give our young people some support on this morning. Look at them. Go ahead. Turn around so they can see you and wave at the people and say, Happy Resurrection Sunday. Look at them. Give them a hand of praise. Amen. Yes, y'all can run and be seated now. Good job. Look at the clothes this morning at about 3 o'clock this afternoon. They won't look how they look now. <laughs> you all can have a seat. It's good to see you all on this morning. Bethel Cathedral, we give God thanks and praise for an opportunity to gather in this formation and to celebrate with uh, the Church of Jesus Christ uh, really all over the world uh, on this Resurrection Sunday, um, we do know that our brothers and sisters in the Eastern Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox, the Coptic Orthodox, the Assyrian Orthodox, and the uh, Ethiopian Orthodox uh, have a different Resurrection Sunday, but we save the same resurrected Savior, amen? amen? And so we greet you in Jesus' joy on this evening. We give God thanks for our pastor uh, and our first lady. Uh, if you all don't know, this is a very, very busy week for folks who are in ministry. Uh, and your pastor put some miles on his truck this weekend and some miles on his voice, but we are glad he is in God's house on this morning. We give God thanks for, uh, for him. I want to call your attention just for a moment to the screen for our weekly announcements. So let us uh, receive our announcements. Morning, Bethel Cathedral family and friends, and those joining us for the very first time, we welcome you. Here are your announcements for Sunday, March the 31st, 2024. Dear Bethel family, I would like to thank you and everyone for all the prayers, cards, and all the love you gave me and my family have received during this difficult time of losing my daughter, Azuri. I appreciate and love all of you. Please continue to keep us in your prayers as we try to heal from this loss. Thank you so much. In love, the Cosby and McCullough family. Please remember that our presiding elder, Jennifer Tinsley, will hold her South District meeting on April the 12th and the 13th, starting at 9 a.m. And the host church is Bethel Crawfordsville, located at 213 West North Street, in Crawfordsville, Indiana, and the host pastor is Reverend Joan Richardson. Just a reminder about the Ibada Dance Company Academy show, Motion Pictures, will be on April the 6th, 2024 at Ben Davis High School, located at 1200 North Grove School Road here in Indianapolis. The tickets are only $20, free parking, and the show times are 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. Please come out and support a show that will definitely have you on your feet. We will be doing a baptism on next Sunday, April the 7th. If you have been thinking about being baptized and would like to, all you have to do is just call the church office at 317-634-7002. Leave your name and phone number and someone will get back with you. Another reminder about the Black Church Coalition headed by Josh Riddick is hoping that you would join him and many others on April the 4th at 6.30 p.m. 
as we make our voices heard regarding having safe and healthy communities. The meeting will be at Light of the World Christian Church located at 4646 North Michigan Road here in Indianapolis. Please make plans to come out. God bless and every one of you have an awesome week. Bethel Cathedral and University have come together again. Can you believe it? Your dream is about to come true. Yes, it's time to reserve your space, pack your bags for a journey of a lifetime to the beautiful continent of Africa, where it will be a 10-day experience from July 14th through July 23rd, 2025. This is a time to inspire people to go beyond their boundaries and experience what makes a place, its people, and its culture special and meaningful. For more information, please call one of the church offices here at Bethel, 317-634-7002, or you can call University United Methodist Church at 317 317- Two five seven zero two three seven. Amen. Amen. Big announcement 2025. So you should start saving your ducats now uh, so that you can make your way for a lifetime uh, trip to the West Coast for about six weeks. Uh, I was over at Mount Carmel doing a series on African-American history and African history. Uh, And we spent a decent amount of time talking about the importance particularly of Ghana because it was so central to the transatlantic slave trade. Uh, The oldest, um, I wouldn't even call it a fort or castle, but the oldest slave trading port, uh, Elmina, is right there on the Gold Coast. Uh, And so it would only be sensible that the first African country Uh, to gain its independence would be the country of Ghana under the leadership of Kwame Nkrumah. So there's lots of rich history, uh, and I do encourage you, if you can, to make sure you uh, take advantage of this unique uh, and once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Um, Amen. So we give God thanks as well for Reverend Haith as the voice of Bethel Cathedral. (laughs) Reverend Haith was hanging out heavy this weekend. She didn't get home till about midnight on Friday. Uh, She preached the saints happy at St. Timothy uh, Church of God in Christ, and we thank God for using her uh, in this season. At this time, we'd invite you to participate in the ministry of generosity, the ministry of giving, the ministry of stewardship. As we've made our way through Holy Week, we know that it's only possible not just because of what God did through Jesus, but what God did through the people who surrounded Jesus. Uh, And even when people last Sunday shouted hallelujah and hosanna in the highest and then turned around on Friday and said crucify him, there were still people who were willing to go to bat for Jesus. Uh, In fact, at the foot of the cross were some women who had been supporting Jesus' ministry financially. You know, Jesus didn't have a house. He didn't have a place to lay his head. His ministry was supported because there were faithful folk who believed what God was doing through him. And even when he could not afford a grave, there were some faithful folk who made sure that he was in a tomb, a borrowed tomb. He wasn't there for long, but he was still in it. Amen. And so on this morning, we have the opportunity to participate in the work that God is doing in our world through the ministry of generosity. Here at the cathedral, there are multiple ways to give, as you can see on the screen. Uh, If you have an envelope and paper money, you can just wave your envelope and our ushers will be glad to receive that. You can give via Cash App, you can give via uh, PayPal, uh, you can give via Giveafly, and you can also mail your gifts into the church. Uh, For those who are joining us online, you as well can participate in this. We know we cannot pay for salvation. It is a gift of grace. And so our giving does not build indulgences. It does not make us okay with God. Our giving is just a way to say, God, we trust you with what you gave us. And surely if you gave it to us, to give it back to you is not a mistake. And so we thank God uh, for the gifts that we can bring. Let us pray over the gifts and then the choir will give us some good giving music. God, we are so thankful 
that as we come on this Resurrection Sunday, we can come because you gave the ultimate gift through your son, Christ Jesus. And because he lives, we can live. And so we pray that you will receive these gifts as they come into your storehouse and do the work that you have called us to do in this part of the vineyard in this season. May the gifts be a blessing to the household of faith and may they reflect the love that you have for the world. Bless the giver and the gift. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you.
praise the Lord, everybody. Can we give the choir another hand round? Thank God for Sister Chrissy. Amen. Decided to die. This is an old Easter favorite, and our very own sister Deborah. Come on, Deborah. Amen. Yeah. So we encourage her and join with us if you know it. Amen. Amen.
come that ought to be good news to somebody this morning he decided to die come on, i wonder if i have any believers that can declare this morning that you thank god that he stayed on the cross come on are there any believers this morning that can declare that i thank god that jesus stayed on the cross thank you 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 he decided to die just to save me i thank god that his son stayed on the cross if you can my sisters and brothers won't you stand around this great sanctuary reach out and grab the neighbor's hand that's standing closer to you just reach out and connect with somebody if there are any young people that's here still in the sanctuary that decide that would like to be a part of children's church they are in the fellowship hall today uh, amen we thank god for each and every one of you we thank god for each and every one of you this morning thank god for our youth ushers that are working the doors today amen release those hands and give the ushers a hand clap of praise this morning Thank you for our young people. Go ahead and grab the neighbor by the hand. I want you to just squeeze some life as a reminder that he decided to die just to save you. Come on, squeeze some life in that hand as a reminder that while Jesus was yet on that cross, he had you on his mind come on squeeze some life into that hand and so we're here this morning because he decided to die just to save you ah come on squeeze some life into that hand say i'm a living witness ah thank you god thank you god come on squeeze some life God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for sending your son to die for us. God, we thank you for resurrection Sunday morning. We thank you, God, for uh, he laid in that tomb on Saturday. But God, we thank you that, God, we got up this morning like your son got up with all power in his hands. God, we thank you, God, for this very moment for these your people now god allow your holy spirit to reign and rule in this house god hide me behind this holy desk speak to me and speak through me so that your people may be blessed god when it's all said and done that your name will get the honor the praise and the glory it is in jesus name that the people of god say amen amen, amen. And amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. And while you are yet standing, won't you turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 20. John, chapter 20, starting at verse number 10. If you can, if you can, if you can, for the reading of God's words, if you can, just remain standing this morning. Amen. If you can, John, the 20th chapter. And I would encourage you during your meditation this week, we're going to walk through this particular chapter. But for our preachment today, we'll start at verse number 10. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. And at this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? And thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, 
tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus says, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. This is where I want to anchor right here, Sister Lori. And Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. That's where I want to anchor today. Turn to your neighbor and say, I have seen the Lord. Come on, turn to somebody else and say, I have seen the Lord. And just as a subtext, just declare with me, and he is still moving stone. Ah, that's what I want to preach on today. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I have seen the Lord. We are at the culminating event in this Christian Olympics. All week long, we have been in worship. It has been the Super Bowl of Christendom. And here we are at the culminating event. See, Jesus' death left his followers stunned because they did not expect Jesus to die. The disciples were now living in fear for their own lives after watching the crowd that yelled Hosanna on Sunday but crucify him on Friday. The women were also afraid, but were willing to venture out the first Easter morning to go to the tomb to finish the preparation of Jesus' body for burial. When the women saw the empty tomb, Mary Magdalene turned around, and in this particular text in verse number two, the, the text says that she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one who Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Uh, see, see, my brothers and sisters, first, Jesus' death wasn't a part of the plan, and now there is an empty tomb. The followers of Jesus did not understand what exactly was happening. When, when the plans of Jesus' followers were different than Jesus's, they suffered. I don't want you to miss this. Uh, when Jesus' followers forgot his word, then they lost sight of what Jesus came to do for them. And after Simon, the disciple Jesus loved and Mary got back to the tomb. They weren't sure what to make of what they were seeing. The disciples examined the contents of the tomb, but didn't find anything to satisfy, satisfy them, leaving it to return to the other disciples. But don't miss this. Mary stayed at the tomb. All right, I thought that there were some sisters that would have hollered. M Mary stayed and when she looked in the tomb again, there were angels. That's what the text says. And the angels asked Mary, sis, why are you crying? She told them that she thought what she thought had happened, that somebody had removed Jesus' body and she wanted to know where they had taken him. Then Mary turned and saw Jesus, whose identity was hidden at this particular time, she saw him standing behind her. And Jesus said to Mary, why are you crying? Mary then responded, she thought Jesus was the gardener. The, 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 the same thing that she has told the angels that somebody had taken his body. Then watch this. The Bible says then Jesus called her name. Jesus says, Mary. 
Mary and the disciples did not understand what was happening Easter morning because it only made sense by faith. Can I pause right there, Dr. Peterson, to say that there are some things in life that only make sense by faith. They, they had seen Jesus do miracles. Uh, they, they have seen Jesus raise folks from the dead. But, but if he's gone, who would raise Jesus? Uh, the, the body wasn't in the tomb anymore and Mary had no one to turn to except a man who might be the gardener and might have seen where the grave robbers has taken Jesus. And I'm sure that Mary had all kind of thoughts rushing through her mind. And the emotions of losing Jesus and the physical strain of sleepless nights wanting to have closure with the body and the spiritual strain of wondering what had happened to her Lord. She was rushing to get some kind of plan together in order to move forward. And sisters and brothers, that's why we are gathered here this morning to celebrate the empty tomb and the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. And I wonder if there are any believers this morning that woke up and declare he is risen, that he is not dead. We, we can't. To worship this morning to to praise God who moved away the stone that day and thank God because he is still moving stone watch this an empty tomb provides hope for you and I in this hopeless world there are so many folks that are searching that are searching in this world, they're searching for forgiveness. They're searching for hope. They're searching for meaning. And the good news, Bethel, is that Easter, is that the empty tomb provides a hope in this hopeless world. And I wonder if there are any believers this morning that got up with an extra burst of energy that says, I can take on whatever the adversary tried to throw at me because God sent his son Jesus to Christ. And the empty tomb represents that he is risen and we have resurrection power. I wonder if there are any believers this morning that can declare that I have hope. Watch this. Matthew chapter 12 verse 20 to 21 says that a bruised wreath, reed is he will not break. Small than wick he will not snuff out. In his name, the nation will put their hope. Matthew says a bruise, reed, and a smaller and wick. And can I say, Bethel, as I look across the sanctuary this morning, as those that are joining us virtually, that describes many of us and our current state of being. Perhaps you're under the sound of my voice this morning and you've been bruised by the trials of life. Perhaps you've been bruised by harsh words or by a friend's anger or by a betrayal of somebody you love. Or maybe you've been bruised by your own failure or failure of those around you. Perhaps you feel like a smothering wick. Watch this. At one time, your passion for God and for ministry and for life was flaming high, but the winds of life have blown, and now you feel one step away from the flame going out altogether. Are there any believers that can testify that I've been bruised? There are many bruised reeds and Smother and wicks in the Bible. Watch this. You are in good company. The woman standing before an angry crowd that wanted to punish her for her sins. She was bruised. The leper who was an outcast and shunned by society. He was bruised. Blind Bartholomew on the side of the road was bruised. The paralytic man lying on a stretcher was bruised. The woman with the issue of blood was bruised. 
But, but what did Jesus say? He says that a bruised reed I will not break and a smothering wick I will not snuff out. In my name you can put your hope. And the greatest message of the resurrection is that if Jesus Christ was powerful enough to move the stone and to overcome the grave, then he is powerful enough to move the stones that are black in your life. I feel like shouting right there, elder. Somebody under the sound of my voice. You have been bruised by what you are experiencing in life. But I thank God that through his son, Jesus the Christ, that I have resurrection power. That God is able to block all the things that are coming in my life. Watch this. The resurrection gives us hope in the face of the unfairness of this world. Gives us strength and courage in every situation that we may face. And can I just pause right there and testify that there are things that will come up in your life that you have to lean on God's resurrection power because the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God comes so you can have life and life more abundantly. Are there any believers this morning that know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world? I wonder if there are any saints that can declare this morning that I have resurrection power. Watch this. I'm still in the text. The resurrection validates every promise that Jesus ever made. That is good news that gives us hope and light and encouragement. When everything else looks bleak. Watch this. There was an angel who invited the women to look in the tomb. And if you go to Matthew's gospel, Matthew records that when the women came to the tomb, the first thing the angel did was to invite them inside. Don't miss this. This is for somebody. The angel said, come and see the place where he lay. The evidence is an empty tomb undisturbed grave clothes, a 200 pound stone that was rolled away and over 515 eyewitnesses. The evidence shows that Jesus the Christ rose again. The evidence shows Bethel that the tomb was empty and the soldiers had no story and millions down through the years will attest to this reality that the God that we serve did not stay in that tomb but on early resurrection Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands and I wonder if I have any saints this morning that can declare that I serve a risen savior I serve a savior that's living and not dead so I can walk with my head up and my shoulders square because the God that I serve is still living and still living in me. I need about 15 saints this morning that can declare he is risen. I feel my help coming. Can, can, can I go in a text? Sit down. Sit down. Sister Deborah, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. In, in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Uh, verse 12, the Apostle Paul wrote that I know whom I believe and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him for that day. Now note, Bethel, that Paul did not say I know what I believe. Paul says I know whom I believe. And millions down through the centuries have themselves met Jesus firsthand and followed him and let him transform 
their lives and I wonder if I have about 25 believers that's right here at Bethel Church that you can declare like Paul I know whom I believe and I believe in a risen Savior because sometimes what I believe may change sometimes the situations may shift sometimes the adversary will show his head sometimes the journey will get tough. Sometimes you have to climb up the rough side of the mountain. Sometimes you will find yourself in the midst of the valley. But if you are clear Bethel in whom you believe that God is still God and he is still omnipotent, that he is still almighty, that no matter what you're going through, God is still God. Can I get about seven saints that can declare I know who I believe and I believe in a risen savior I've met him for myself I've seen him for myself and he is still God and he is still making ways out of no ways he is still healing bodies and he is still opening doors I wonder if I have any believers this morning that can declare I know in whom I believe I have seen him and he's still rolling away stones I have met him and he is still working miracles I have seen him and he is still the almighty God slap your neighbor and say neighbor I have seen him and he is still rolling away stone sit down I'm almost through Bethel sit down I promise y'all I promise y'all I have been happy all week long and then I went to the church of God in Christ and got even happier because when I think of the goodness of Jesus I'm in the text, I'm in the text. I'm in the text. I'm in the text. I'm right here in the text. I'm right here in the text. See, see, the Bible says that he called Mary by name. And then he said, go tell my brothers. See, see here it is. Here's the lesson for today. The lesson for today is that that's the same assignment that you and I have. Go tell my brothers and sisters what you have seen. See, many of us believe that the way to evangelize is to tell folks about your story. And the truth is, Reverend Deidre, that, that is one effective way of getting folks to join the army of the Lord. But the truth of the matter is, 95% of all individuals who make a commitment to God were invited to a worship service. So look at your neighbor. This is a free lesson in the text today. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ought to invite somebody to church. Come on, y'all didn't talk. Y'all still looking at pastor. Say, neighbor, you know it's good when you come you ought to invite somebody into the house of the Lord the Bible says that Mary stayed at the tomb and like the women at the well that went back and told the town come see a man who knows all that I've done and yet still loves me now the responsibility for sharing Christ falls on each and every one of us Bethel see the the Holy Ghost is convicting folks. Circumstances are softening their hearts. And can you imagine Bethel? The excitement that the women felt that morning. I'm coming for the women right now. And there are many of you that are living in days of trials. And you are getting hit on all sides. It's here. It's there you feel like life is pouring in on you. And if you are here this morning, if you are in the midst 
of a trial be encouraged to maintain hope because what a difference a day makes there are probably even more of you living in a day like the disciples confused at his death the one who said I will never leave you has now passed so you had lose your hope the heat of the trial may be over but now it's time of confusion and frustration and discouragement I'm talking to somebody under the sound of my voice that's in the midst of uncertainty and perhaps your faith has become a weak the future seems cloudy the outcome seems uncertain and if that's where you are this morning my encouragement to you is to maintain your faith because what a difference a day makes and all of us are facing those kind of days a day of victory a day of good news a day of renewed hope and I wonder if I have any believers this morning that can declare that I've seen the Lord and even though I might be going through the fiery furnace I know that the God that we serve has resurrection power on the third day he came out of the grave and gave us hope day three means a change of fortune day three means victory now and in heaven but what a difference a day make Bethel maintain your hope keep your faith and be encouraged and that's what resurrection has in store for us and then we will see victory in our lives but all of us that believe in Jesus the Christ have a day that we will see his coming a day when we will be with him a day of victory and we ought to be excited Bethel can y'all practice on earth what y'all will do in heaven only faith in Christ is valid because only Jesus the Christ rose from the dead see no other religion defeated death no other can make this claim the resurrection God is the central event of our Christian faith it is victory in Jesus and I wonder if I have any saints that can declare that I've steered death eye to eye and the resurrection means that I have power to get up power in the midst of the fiery furnace power like a rock I can stand on a hope that raises you above every despair everything hinges on the resurrection of Jesus the Christ the Bible says that Mary saw Jesus and Jesus says go tell the brothers that I'm still rolling away stones and I wonder if I have any believers that can say like Mary said to the disciples I have seen the Lord and can I tell you this morning he is risen we can declare that he is still mending broken hearts he is still wiping away tears I have seen the Lord sister Rachel and he's still making ways out of no ways I've seen the Lord and he's still opening doors that no man can shut and he's still taking care of my physical needs I've seen the Lord and he still gives me rest he still provides direction he still gives me grace I've seen the Lord and he still gives me peace I've seen the Lord and he's still saving my sins I've seen the Lord and he's still pointing me towards truth he is not dead he got up he got up I've seen him and he's still working on my behalf I wonder if I have any believers this morning that can declare that I've seen the Lord Come on, saints. Come on, saints. I don't know what stones are in your life, but this text tells us that he is risen.
understand that he is alive and because he's alive we can face tomorrow and because he lives all of my fears are gone look at your neighbor say neighbor he got up hallelujah to jesus hallelujah the devil thought he had him because on Friday they stretched him wide he hung his head and then he died I said he died on Friday night he died and then they laid him in a borrowed tomb and all day Saturday it was silent but the Bible tells me that on earth Resurrection Sunday morning. He got up. I said he got up. But the God that I serve is still rolling away stones, rolling away the difficulties of life. So can I pause for a moment and celebrate? Hallelujah. You may, if you can, won't you stand around this great sanctuary? Come on, find somebody. Look at them dead in the eye. Tell them he got up. Come on, y'all miss y'all shout right there. Come on, they didn't shout with you. Find somebody else. Come on, find somebody else, tell them. He got up. And because he got up, then I can get up. Because he got up, I don't have to stay where I am. Because he got up with all power. for one moment uh, can I just testify for one moment I oh, know Bethel when I said I was gonna get in this politics thing you should have said pastor don't do it but I did it anyway all week long they have dragged me on social media all week long I said God why 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 why, why the pastor they came after the church. Y'all know there are two things you need to stay away from, my family and my church. Because then my real Jamaican will come out. And I ain't that all the way saved yet. I'm in transition. Pastor, 
Brother Weaver, I'm still in trip. The Lord is still working on me. I'll be honest, there's sometimes you come after my family and my church, something well up on the inside. And I remember that he died for my salvation. And I can ask for forgiveness. And they came, Sister Deborah, you know. But then I was praying on Friday. And G.E. Patterson would minister to my soul. He simply says, if God is for you, then those that are against you don't count. I say y'all can talk all you want because if God is for you and because I serve a resurrected God with all power in his hands, then those that are against you, they don't count. We have given the adversary too much credit but can I pause for a moment and declare there are about 40 saints that's in Bethel this morning that can declare that he got up and because he got up he is for me all right I'm through I'm through I know they say this this Negro somebody said I'm gonna tell you what they said they said they need to buy a one-way ticket for me to go back to D.C. That's what they said. And I said, you mess with God's people if you want. <laughs> you go ahead with mess with God anointing if you want. And so let this be a declaration to the adversary. Stay away from the people of God. Get back to the text. There's somebody on the sound of my voice this morning that, that you don't know the savior that we've just preached about the one that got up with resurrection power Bethel do me a favor Jesus said to Mary go tell your brothers and sisters what you have seen look around this room if there's somebody that's not as familiar to you ask them a quick question are you saved just ask a question. Come on, ask somebody. Are you saved? Do you have a relationship with Christ? Do you have a relationship with God? Just ask a simple question. Are you saved? Are you saved? Are you saved? We have a saved house. Come on, there are folks in the house. Come on, just ask the question. Are you saved? Do you have a relationship? Come on, he's in the house this morning. Don't miss your opportunity. Don't, don't miss it. Everybody saved? Come on and celebrate God. Everybody saved in the house. You can invite some folks in. My second call this morning. Go back to that neighbor. Ask him, do you have a church home? Do you have somewhere where you're working out your soul salvation? Because we'd love to have you here at Bethel Church. Come on, talk to them. Come on, you have, you have a hairdresser. You have a barber. You have the favorite restaurant you like to go to. But do you have someone where you're growing in grace? Come on, ask somebody. Come on, is there one this morning? Want to come and walk with us at Bethel? Come on. Anybody, anybody, somebody. I would love to serve as your pastor. Amen, 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 amen. Come on, come on, Bethel, you can do better than that. Come on, we're not perfect, but God is still working through us. Come on, y'all better thank God. Come on, is there one this morning? Yes, Lord.
Amen. To Calvary, to save the wretch like you and me. Oh, amen. 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 Come on, just say. Oh, come on, y'all better sing that song. They hung him high. They hung him high. They stretched. They stretched him high. He hung his head. He hung his head. Then he died. of Sister Juanita and those of us that have been on the prayer line know that we've been praying for Mahogany for the last year uh, that she had a tumor she was in the hospital but look what the Lord has done he is still come on back oh God brought a reminder to us today that he is still answering prayers hallelujah we thank God our visitors from Ohio, thank you for joining us in worship this morning. Come on and celebrate God. Come on, Bethel, you can do better than that. Celebrate God for them. Amen. Come on, that's love. That's love. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. That's love. Earlier last week, as I was praying, the Lord said it's a good time to commune the people of God. You mess with some of our tradition and practices because in Methodism, African Methodism, we usually do communion on first Sunday. So somebody said, we're going to commune today and next week. And I remember the word of God say, do it as often as you can in remembrance of me. The truth is, Brother Carl, we all need it. Amen. And so I'm going to invite us all today. We practice an open table in Methodism, which simply says that none of us deserve this. But yet while we were yet sinning, that God sent his son Jesus to die for us. Simply put, None of us deserve to come to this holy desk to eat of the wafer symbolizing the body of Christ and the blood symbolizing his death shed on Calvary's cross. Yet, you that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith. Take this holy sacrament to your comfort. Make your humble confession to almighty God by meekly kneeling or bowing. We invite you, my brothers and sisters, to commune with us this morning. Come 
on, I need y'all to keep singing that. Come on, let's declare the general confession. you stand around this great sanctuary and let's declare together the general confession media ministry can you pull that up on the screen for us the general confession we'll declare it together almighty God father for Lord Jesus Christ maker of all things judge of all men we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are hardly so. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may have a hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to your honor and glory. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who if you tend to mercy to give your only Son, Jesus the Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who may thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full perfect sufficient oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and it instituted and in his holy gospel command us to continue perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again hear us O merciful father we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receive in these your creatures of bread and wine according to your son our savior jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for the many for the remissions of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in a remembrance of me. My sisters and brothers, right where you are, you may be seated. The ministers will come and serve you. If you desire to eat from the communal cup, as we do on typical Sundays, we invite you to come in the center aisle. If not, we'll do the portable. If someone could maybe get our kid, children, they might be outside. Uh, they might be hunting for eggs in the back. Amen.
young people are coming in. We don't want to commute. Sister Rachel, they could come through the side door if that's all right. We're messing up their fun. Amen. One shall lead them. Oh, precious. Oh, precious is that fall that makes me white as Ministers, uh, Pastor Hooks, can you come over here and help? body of Jesus Christ that was broken for you. Take, eat, and be grateful. The blood that was shed for our sins on that old rugged cross. We remember and we are grateful. Drink all of it. Oh, how precious is the blood. Come on, let's declare together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our truth. As we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, won't you stand around this great sanctuary? Thank you for the stewardesses that are coming to serve us. Amen. Come on, celebrate God for our children. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for First Lady Reverend Dr. Carla Perkins and her leadership of our children's ministry. Hon, come on, will you come and stand with me? Amen. Amen. And thank God for all, <laughs> she's still working. And I thank God for, <laughs> it's not our son, but he's going to be today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I thank God for all of the adults and young adults. Where's first daughter? Come on, first daughter. Amen. I thank God for teenagers. Amen. Thank God for you, Bethel. Uh, we pray that you have a great Resurrection Sunday. Make sure you hug somebody before you leave today. Amen. Remind them that we have seen Jesus and he's still rolling away stones. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the Lord give you peace. 
May the Lord give me his joy for this joy that we have. The world didn't give it to us, and the world can't take it away until we shall meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.